presented by Chrysler, the name that makes news in watch bands. Brain operation fails to cure thief. This is a United Press dispatch dated Pittsburgh, June 19, 1952. Scientists and doctors are continually investigating this problem, the functioning of the criminal mind. Tonight, Chrysler presents The Miraculous Serum, starring Lola Albright and Richard Durr with Louis Hector. And this is Rex Marshall, pinch hitting once again for your regular host, Bob Williams, who's on vacation. And with your permission, billing myself tonight as Marshall the Magician, complete with top hat, white rabbit, and all. Oh, you don't see the white rabbit? Well, he's inside the hat. Oh, I realize you don't see him now. But you know, any magician can make a white rabbit appear from a hat simply by making a magic pass and saying the magic words, abracadabra and presto. And here we have a little furry friend already to join the party. But now, let me show you some magic that really is miraculous. Here, I have an old watch. Nice looking watch, but not especially distinctive. Now, we'll put it in the magic hat, say the magic word, Chrysler, and here, is that very same watch, looking as new and brilliant as a $150 timepiece. Well, you know, friends, that's a magic trick that you can do for yourselves, and so easily. All you do is go to your jeweler and ask him to put a Chrysler watch band on your watch. And in that very easy way, you can make your watch look like $150, and yet it costs you actually only $12.95 to do the trick. And you can imagine what a wonderful graduation gift this would be. Look how each link of that watch band sparkles like a diamond. You know, this diamond cut design is exclusive with Golden Comet by Chrysler. And it brings a gleaming new luxury to every man's wrist. And here's something else I'd like especially to point out to you. Only Chrysler bands have this extra expansion, extra flexibility. Now, that's because of their super-calibrated seven-coil springs. And yet, you pay no more for the Golden Comet than you do for ordinary watch bands. Only $12.95, federal tax included. So make your watch look better than new and dress up your appearance, too, with Chrysler. It's a wonderful gift for every graduate and for yourself, also. And now, Chrysler presents... The Miraculous Serum, starring Lola Albright and Richard Durr. Ah, the man's out of his mind. Mr. Creechy, locate Dr. Scott for me, please. There, oh, there you are. I've got it and it won't wait. A whole new approach. The thing all medicine has been waiting for. you got to help me, Harry. Did you write this memo? Yes, certainly I wrote this memo. What do you think I'm talking about? I need a live patient to try this on. Have you gone completely out of your mind? Do you realize you are asking me to violate every medical ethic? You can stand there and talk about ethics when I've discovered a way to save thousands of lives. Now, just a moment. Sit down. Uh, now, I don't mind telling you to your face that you're the most brilliant biochemist that I've ever met, but I want you to understand one thing. As long as I'm head of this hospital, you'll get no living patients to experiment on. Now, is that clear? All right, so maybe I did kick over the traces, Harry, but this thing is big. All right, all right, now, just take it easy. Now, tell me how big. Well, now, look. If you cut a worm in two, the worm grows a new front end, right? Right. Now, the process that makes that happen, in one word, is adaptation. The ability of living things to adjust themselves to changing conditions. What are you getting at? Your body adapts to a cut by growing new skin. Your blood adapts to disease by developing white corpuscles to fight germs. And adaptability is controlled by one thing alone, the pineal gland. But the pineal function has never been understood. It hasn't. Harry, these last few months of concentrated experimentation in your labs has uncovered its secret. I wound up with, with a fantastic serum. I tried it on tubercular guinea pigs. They adapted to the tubercle bacillus. I brought him from near death to a complete cure in just under 30 hours. And then I tried it on a rabid dog. He adapted. Well, then you got yourself a new specific and it kills you. And I used it on a cat with a fractured spine. The spine reassembled itself and grew together. Well, the same serum? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It works on arthritis, pneumonia, spinal meningitis, and toothache. But now we've gone as far as we can go. The, the time's come to try it on a live human being. I'm sorry, Harry, I'd like to help you, but the most broken-down patient in this clinic is still the precious human life. I can do it. 
Well, I know what you mean, and I, I appreciate your position as head of this hospital, but, well, I still don't agree with you. Just a minute, Dan. I'll tell you what. I'm promising you nothing, and if ever you quote me, I'll kill you. But if I get a case that is absolutely hopeless, and I mean really on the last gasp, but conscious enough to grant you permission, then maybe. If they're that conscious, you won't call them hopeless. Uh, thanks anyway, Harry. I'll send you my lab notes, and if they don't curl your hair, I'll eat them. <laughs> How is she, nurse? Unbelievable how some of them hang on. Yes, yeah, she should have been dead hours ago. I don't think she'll last much longer. Well, everything's been done. Everything. She hasn't a chance, poor kid. Is that you, Doc? She's conscious. Conscious. Nurse, get a hold of Dr. Scott and tell him to bring his serum. He'll understand. Hurry. Doc? I'm here. How's it look, Doc? You don't have to tell me. I know. What is it, Harry? Uh, that'll be all, nurse. Thank you. Last stages of TB, lungs hemorrhaging. She's only got a few minutes more. Wait, Dan. Miss Williams. Uh -huh. Miss Williams. This is Dr. Scott. He has a serum. It's something new. It may be dangerous. He'd like to try it on you. Why not? Doesn't matter. Go ahead, then. Any pigs reacted like that, too. She's alive. She's alive. Pulse very slow, but quite steady. Harry. Dan. I can't believe it. here quite comfortably. I wonder where she could be. She should have been here long ago. Think it was all right to let her find her own way? Oh, yes, quite. She knows her way about all right. I gave her five dollars for a taxi fare. No, I've been having quite a long chat with her. No, Dan, she's, she's quite a nice girl. She is? <laughs> I wonder if she'd been beautiful if you'd have paid her more attention. I guess I must seem sort of odd to you, Harry. I'm immune to things like that, I guess. Uh, too busy. Too much to do. Say, where is she? I don't know. <coughs> you don't think she could have had an accident, do you? I'm going to call the hospital. Stand this. 
Where could she be? We'd better call the police. I tell you, we can't do that, Dan. We've done harm enough performing an unethical experiment on an innocent girl. Which saved her life. And letting, letting a girl who's convalescent go out of our care. I've notified all the emergency wards and they'll call me if she's picked up sick. No. <coughs> What is it, Bill? Dr. Bob. Yes? Can I do anything for you? Aren't you going to let me come in? Good heavens! Come in! Come in! Well, Dan, don't you know me? Dan! This is Carol Williams. You like the way I look? Like it? Why, I never... Dan, there's something I want to tell you. You saved my life. But you gave me more than that. You gave me the whole world. Dan, do you understand what I'm telling you? You gave me the world. And I love you for it. <laughs> Immune, eh? <laughs> Carol, I... Now, uh... young lady, where have you been? Well, I had some shopping to do. Shopping? On five dollars? Oh, that? Of course not. I ordered some things sent up. They'll be here in the morning. Oh, well, where did you get the money? Well, don't worry, Doctor. They're all paid for. Oh, what a match, Dan. Oh, your pipe. Let me. Thank you, my dear. Steady, Carol, your hand. Well, your hand. Why, ha Harry, there isn't a mark on her. Oh, that's not so remarkable as her adaptation to the tubercular glands. Carol, I'm going to ignore this somewhat spectacular exhibition of yours and ask you about the money again. Now, where did you get it? Well, if you must know, I took it away from a man. What man? Just a man. I was waiting for a taxi, and he was coming out of the bank, stuffing money into his wallet. Well, it looked like a whole lot of money, so when he put it back in his pocket, I slipped it out. You slipped it out? Of course, it was easy. But did nobody see you or try to stop you? Well, no, I just sort of went along with the crowd. <laughs> the man became terribly upset when he found out it was gone. He called the policeman and they went off to get him. Carol, wait a minute. You mean, you mean just stayed there and watched? Don't you see, Dan? This is another adaptation. Her first impulse was to go to the crowd and then fade off into the blackness. Carol! You can't go around doing things like this. Why not? I needed the money. Oh, I'm going to have lots of things now. Nobody's going to stop. But don't you realize you're taking other people's property? We shall have to go to the police about this. Harry, wait a minute. We can't do that. I'll, I'll make good the money. I, I'll pay him back. How much did you take from him, Carol? Well, $5,000. I'll pay him. But that's quite a lot of money, Dan. I've got it. But don't you see... Carol, my dear, it's getting very late, and don't forget you're still convalescing. Don't you like to get ready for bed? Come on, my dear. I'll show you to your room. Well, I am rather sleepy. I'll say good night later. Now, why did you run her off like that? She just got here. I wanted to talk to her. Now, listen to me, Dan. Repaying the money doesn't solve the problem. She's still guilty of robbery. No, she's not. No more than an infant or an insane person. If there's any responsibility, it's ours. You're quite right, but she's got to be stopped. What do you mean, stopped? She needs to be taken care of, that's yeah, all. Yeah, she needs to be taken care of like an outbreak of black plague. Don't you see we've got what we've done to this girl? It isn't that she's not adaptive normally. She's perfectly normally adaptive in every respect. She's the adaptive ultimate. So far, so good, then nothing can hurt her. She's safer than any human being has ever been. Don't you realize what else your serum has done? Don't you realize it? How safe do you think other human beings will be from that woman? What do you mean by that? She's adapted physically, true. But the adaptive mechanism has just run wild. I tell you, that woman can adapt to anyone or anything, socially, morally, or intellectually. She'll grab what she wants from the people around her. A word, a meal, or a fortune. I still can't think of her as dangerous somehow. But don't you realize that she's already adapted herself to you? What's next? You gave her the world. She told you that herself. And I'm afraid she means it. Oh, no. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you, we can't let her out of our sight. We've got to keep her here until we make up our minds what to do. I just came to say good night, Dan. Good night, Carol. Carol, I've been uh, talking about you to Dan, and I'm afraid your new adaptiveness might be harmful. A minor operation might adjust that adaptiveness to normal. Back to normal? Dr. Barker, are you out of your mind? I have plans, great plans. I need my adaptability. Plans? Doctor, I've had 25 years of hunger, no clothes, no future. That's all behind me now. Now I can do anything, get anything I want, and no one can stop me. Good night, Dr. Barker. Good night, Dan. Well, do you believe me now? It's frightening. She can't do it. I won't let her. I'm afraid it's too late for that. She's completely without morals or conscience. They stood in her way, and she's adapted out of them. I'm going to talk to her. Carol, it's Dan. May I come in? She's disappeared. <laughs> Don't take this sign too seriously. I really have a very nice wife. But you know, sometimes she is rather unfair to my wallet. Seems she uses a heck of a lot of money for clothes. And I happen to know that you can save money on clothes. Yeah, take this for example. You know, every lady has a plain, simple dress, something like this. Well, now just watch this transformation. All you do is add the new cincher. And presto, you have a lovely new style. Well, you know, what goes for dresses goes for watches, too. Now, you take your old watch, no matter how old-fashioned a style it may be. Then, you just add Chrysler's Golden Fantasy watch band. And instantly, it takes on all the costly glamour of the new bracelet watch. And yet, it costs you just $9.95 for Chrysler's beautiful Golden Fantasy watch band. And you can imagine what a beautiful gift that would make for a girl graduate. And for a bridesmaid, too. I tell you what, let's take a close look at it, shall we? See how the Golden Fantasy by Chrysler really becomes a part of your watch. How it brings you all the elegance of a true bracelet watch. Just remember to ask for it by its full name, Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. And watch how it expands. Golden Fantasy lets you enjoy all the extra comfort and convenience of an expansion band. Why, that's so practical. You can slip Golden Fantasy up out of the way whenever you're doing any housework. Remember, Golden Fantasy, the only watch band that transforms any watch into a bracelet watch, costs less than many ordinary bands. Only $9.95, federal tax included. So pay a visit to your jeweler and make your watch look smarter than new with the Golden Fantasy Watch Bracelet by Chrysler. Truly, it's the perfect gift for any girl graduate and for every bridesmaid, too. And now, back to our story, The Miraculous Serum, starring Lola Albright and Richard Dirk. Hello, Dan. How's the bloodhound business? Well, a little harder to follow the trail. When she first went to Washington four months ago, they'd mention her name any time she made news, but listen to this one today. They're calling a certain lady the 10th cabinet member. That isn't good. Where is she going, Harry? What does she do? Well, it's rather hard to tell. She seems to have a great deal of influence now. She's not evil. Well, of course she isn't. She just seems to want power, more and more of it. Very soon she'll be running Washington. And whoever runs Washington bids fair to run the world. She said something just like that once. She, she said, I've given her more than her life. I'd given her the whole world. She most certainly did. I also said that I loved you, Dan. Carol. Well, if it isn't little Miss Pentagon herself, what brings you down to our level? Well, I'm sorry I haven't been in touch with you, too, but I... Well, you understand, don't you, Dan? I don't understand anything, and I don't want to. I only know that you're back. Oh. Doctor, could you excuse us for just a few minutes? I could, but I'm not so sure that I should. I'll be in the lab, Dan, in case you should need me. 
Carol, I've been worried to have... Dan, Dan, I've missed you so. Why didn't you write? Why didn't you come back before? Well, I couldn't, Dan. Not while I was so busy. Not while things were so unsettled. And now things are settled? Well, now I know where I am, what I am. Now I know exactly what I want. What exactly do you want? You, first of all. Oh, Dan, I've met a lot of men since I've been away, but... Most of them are fools. They're not like you. What do you know about me? Well, I know everything about you. About how you became a famous man before you were 25. Because you never let anything stand in your way. I never stole from anyone. Will you forget about that? It wasn't important. Besides, you would have done that more if it had been necessary. You don't know me as well as you think you do. I know I haven't been able to get you out of my mind. Dan, I need you. I knew it that first night I came here from the hospital. I want you with me. I want you with me right to the top. The top? Darling, I have influence now. More than you can ever imagine. This whole world is a ripe plum waiting to be picked. Uh, Carol, you're, you're not serious about this. Oh, but I am. Deadly serious. I can't believe it, this, this need for power, I, I don't understand. Oh, Carol, you're a beautiful woman your whole life, have you? What? You were right. I don't know you. I'm wasting my time. Where are you going? I'm going to bed. In the morning, I'll fly back to Washington. I have a lot to do. Good night, Dan. I don't think anything can stop her now. She's got to be stopped. Her adaptability can be infinite. She couldn't survive being run over by a steamroller. Yes. Now, don't interrupt me. She can't be immune to the fundamental laws of biology. No human being can exist without oxygen. You mean surrounded with carbon dioxide and that it shut off her oxygen supply and she couldn't adapt to that any more than she could adapt against the law of gravity? You got it. I've got carbon dioxide in pressure tanks in the lab. I also know a way where we can feed a hose through the wall into her room. We'll put a lighted candle in her room. You'll steal in and quietly close the window. When the candle goes out, we'll know that there is sufficient CO2 in there to knock her out. Then rush her to the hospital and I'll have everything ready for the operation. Now, wait a minute. How far are you going with this? I intend to do nothing but try and restore her to normalcy. I don't know how I can, but I'm going to try it. Come, let's hurry. Well, that's about it. I, I'll put the candle in the room. I'll stand by here. Don't knock anything over.
promise you, right? Well, if you mean, will she live? Yes. If you mean, have I succeeded? I don't know, and it'll be some time before I can find out. What happens if the operation hasn't succeeded? Well, your guess is just as good as mine. I hate to think what might happen. Come on. You can come in and see her now. Now she's awake? Yes. Dan. The word is you're going to be all right. Dan, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to help you get the money and pay it back. What's the matter? Dan, you don't believe me, do you? What can I believe? You've just said what I want to hear more than anything else in the world, but how do I know it isn't a, a lie, an adaptation? Well, <clears throat> there's your answer, Dan. She wouldn't have reacted to that needle if she had retained her original adaptability. I'm going to be all right, darling. Come on, Dan. You've got to get the whack to work, work on that serum. And with some modifications, it's going to be a great benefit to the medical profession. And you're just the man to do it. One of science's greatest contributions is increasing our understanding of the criminal mind. These scientists work toward the day when crime will end. And so we come to the conclusion of another of our Tales of Tomorrow, brought to you tonight by Chrysler. Before we have a final word from our friends, the Chrysler Kids, let's take a look at one of the most famous watch band styles ever made. It's Your Signet by Chrysler, the only expansion watch band that's personalized with your own initials. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Initial just for me, and so it's my band. It's your band. It's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me too. For you too. It makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value too. For the best band in the land. It's Chrysler. Makes your watch look better than new. Makes it personal just for you. It's Chrysler. Tales of Tomorrow will be brought to you next week by C.H. Maslin and Sons, makers of Maslin Beauty Blend Broadlooms and authentic hunting and fishing clothes. Now just one of Maslin's famous Beauty Blend Broadlooms is this one right here. Ballerina, a stunning modern pattern which relies on soft color and exciting texture for its rhythmic grace and beauty. It comes in three modern colors at about $9.95 a square yard. See Ballerina, a Beauty Blend Broadloom by Maslin, your host next week on Tales of Tomorrow. Miss Albright's Furs, designed by Nettie Arnheimer, gown by Ann Verdi. Preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.